Sonic the Hedgehog comes to us from director Jeff Fowler in his directorial debut. And this is the long-awaited feature adaptation of the beloved Sonic the Hedgehog series of video games, which went on to inspire anime, comic books, cartoons, and many, many memes. Growing up, the presence of Sonic was everywhere. He is one of the true gaming icons next to Mario, Pikachu, and Lara Croft. 3D character platform games like Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, and Crash Bandicoot were huge when I was growing up. So I was introduced to Sonic more through his 3D games like Sonic Adventure and through all of the Sonic cartoons before eventually being introduced to the original Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive games. So Sonic is a character that I remember very fondly from my childhood along with Tails, Knuckles and Shadow. Personally I've always thought that a Sonic movie would work best as an animated film to capture the imagination and creativity of the games. The Sonic's world and characters are purposely designed to be exaggerated and cartoonish. Additionally we've seen Sonic and Eggman cameo in the Wreck-It Ralph films where they fit in quite well. So instead we've got a live action film with Sonic portrayed using CGI, with Ben Schwartz doing the voice and motion capture. Initially, Paramount Pictures tried to design Sonic to look more realistic, and boy do I remember the backlash when that first trailer dropped. If you search for the trailer on the Mono Report Facebook page, you can still see all the reactions that it got. I personally didn't hate the design quite as passionately as a lot of other people did. To me, it just wasn't Sonic. And with the Detective Pikachu movie showing how you can faithfully translate these characters into live action, the design was just inexcusable. Thankfully, after hearing all the fan back, Backlash, Paramount and director Jeff Fowler decided to delay the film to make Sonic actually look like the character that we know and love with the help of Sonic artist Tyson Hess. And thank the heavens that they did because there's no way I would have enjoyed this film as much as I did if they had kept the old creepy design. Bottom line, Sonic the Hedgehog is a fun, harmless family film that knows that it's silly and over the top. Sonic has always been a cartoon character. He's a blue alien hedgehog that runs at supersonic speeds. So trying to completely change the design would have destroyed the essence of the character. Sonic the Hedgehog is a fairly straightforward buddy comedy film where Sonic is forced to come to Earth and makes a home for himself in Green Hills, Montana. A very obvious nod to Green Hill Zone from the games. One day Sonic accidentally causes a blackout, gaining the attention of the US government and the egocentric Dr. Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey. Sonic teams up with the local Sheriff Tom, played by James Marsden, and travels to San Francisco to acquire something that will prevent Dr. Robotnik from capturing Sonic and experimenting on him. This is a film that is primarily targeted at kids and families, so the plot is fairly slim and familiar, with many of the jokes aimed at that younger audience, although there is some humour that adults will appreciate. For a movie based on Sonic the Hedgehog, this is fine. Jeff Fowler follows a formula that we've seen before in movies like E.T., Masters of the Universe, and Bumblebee, just with Sonic characters added in. And honestly, I was okay with that. I was never expecting a Sonic the Hedgehog movie to be a masterclass in storytelling, and it never needed to be. For older viewers, a major hook has been seeing Jim Carrey playing Dr. Robotnik in what seemed to be vintage 90s Jim Carrey mode. I spent countless hours watching Jim Carrey movies when I was a kid, so so watching him back doing a role that carried the essence of his classic characters was just everything. While he is older now and a little less nimble, I'd be lying if I didn't eat up all the scenes that Jim Carrey was in, embodying the energetic traits from characters like Ace Ventura and the Riddler. However, a big shout out needs to go to James Marsden, who is required for a good chunk of this movie to be acting opposite essentially nothing, as Sonic is obviously added in later via CGI. Of course, Ben Schwartz does his bit later on, but that's all separated from James Marsden's performance. Additionally, I really enjoyed Ben Schwartz's portrayal of Sonic. Sonic, who did a great job of making the character his own and just creating this hyperactive but likeable teenager. There were moments that I didn't even realise I was listening to Ben Schwartz. On top of all of that, if you're a Sonic fan, this film is a goldmine for easter eggs, with some true deep cut references that'll fly over the heads of most viewers. Heck, there's even a couple of sequences inspired by X-Men Days of Future Past. There are plenty of visual nods to different Sonic video game levels, including the real Green Hill Zone, different Sonic characters, and even some popular memes. Even the movie's end credit sequence is a visual treat. Sonic the Hedgehog also contains some real welcome surprises with the music as well, which beautifully honours Sonic's history with nods to even recent titles like Sonic Mania. Props needs to go to composer Tom Holkenberg or Junkie XL for including so many fun surprises. Most importantly, Sonic fans absolutely stay for the mid credit scene. You do not want to miss it. Sonic the Hedgehog is far from a perfect film, but it is a lot of fun, especially for families and fans of Sonic. If you're unfamiliar with the character or you're not a fan of movies that cater to more younger audiences, I really can't see this movie doing much for you. The movie also contains some obnoxious instances of product placement, while the visual effects can leave a bit to be desired at times. This is a movie that knowingly falls into many of the cheesy tropes that are associated with these kinds of kid-friendly films, but for me personally, the good outweighed the bad. I genuinely appreciated the amount of heart that the movie had, with its tried and true but welcome focus on friendship. The movie also doesn't overstate its welcome either, being an easily digestible breeze, clocking in at under 100 minutes. If we do get a sequel, I am hoping that the 
script gets punched up with humor and dialogue that caters more to people of all ages like Pixar movies do, rather than being aimed more specifically towards kids, but I am excited to see where things go. Plus, some of the cheesy rock songs from Sonic Adventure would be appreciated as well. In terms of stacking Sonic up against other video game adaptations, it's definitely not as good as Detective Pikachu, but it is leaps and bounds better than the vast majority of video game adaptations. So that's something. I honestly had quite a fun time with Sonic. I'd say if you're a fan of Sonic or you're wanting a family-friendly adventure, then Sonic the Hedgehog is absolutely worth your time. Otherwise, the film might not be for you. Sonic the Hedgehog gets a 7.5 out of 10 from me. Guys, I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your Mono Fix. Bye, guys. <laughs>